Canon's found a way to solve a weird but very real problem that's found in most mirrorless camera sensors – stray light messing with your pixels. Their solution results in cleaner images, less noise, and better shadow detail. I mean, who doesn't want that? So how does Canon solve this and provide a value proposition? Well, I'll break it down for you step by step, as I always do. And if you are interested in staying ahead of the camera curve, hit that subscribe button. It keeps this channel growing while keeping you in the loop. In Canon's patent application JP2025-084928, filed on September 6, 2021, updated March 3, 2023, and published June 3, 2025, Canon claims to solve a problem with how the avalanche light emission is captured by the sensor, using that moth-eyed structure which induces crosstalk and stray light. So here's what that means. When it comes to capturing light on a sensor called photoelectric conversion, what happens is the photons enter into the cell or the, the sensor. They hit the photocyte and they're converted to electrons. And based on that measurement, we have either it's clipped or we have usable information. But sometimes stray photons can create an avalanche of charge. And what that results is in, well, lost contrast, lost image quality, more noise. And these aren't good things. And Canon's found a way to solve that. And this is actually a big deal. This is not a minor update. This requires a completely new architecture, which means that we're not likely to see a solution in the near term. But this could, this could build towards Canon's next, how should we say, level of cameras. And we're probably at the earliest looking three to five years out. So no, this isn't something that we'd see in today's cameras like the EOS R5 Mark II or the R3 sensor or even an R3 Mark II if it ever came out. But if Canon wants to add photon counting, a global shutter in future cameras, and other advanced technologies to get us to that next generation, Canon needs to do this. This is all about setting up Canon for the future. Canon's fix? Tiny trenches, or at least that's part of the fix. Now, when I first heard this, I had to reread it several times. I thought, well, don't we want bigger photo sites to capture more light, to capture more dynamic range? Well, not so much. Canon's created what they call an uneven structure, essentially microscopic trenches etched into the surface of the silicone. And this is what controls how the light behaves and is essential to this patent. Each trench is smaller than the wavelength of the light causing the problem. Canon defines it mathematically. An effective period of uneven structure is smaller than HC over E times EA. Okay, so let's explain that formula. And if you watch NOVA on a regular basis, this isn't going to sound so strange. So H, well, that represents Planck's constant. Yep, that's right, Planck's constant. C, any guesses? Well, that's the speed of light. E is the elementary charge, and EA, that's all one variable. Well, that's the uh, band gap on the silicone. And Canon does clarify that in silicone, this means that the trenches have a period between 1.1 micrometer and 0.2 micrometers. And in figure eight, that's where we can see these trenches, and they're labeled with reference numeral 325. Instead of bouncing light back and forth like it does in figure 10, the light behaves more like a wave, part of that wave-particle duality. The change in material slows it down gently and directs the light out of the sensor. The change in the effective reflective index becomes gentle. The reflection of the avalanche emission light at the bottom of the uneven structure becomes small. Normally, like in figure 10 here, the avalanche light reflects off the back of the sensor and scatters in all the wrong places. But Canon's uneven trench structure slows the light down gently. It behaves more like a wave instead of a particle. The change in the effective refractive index becomes gentle, while the reflection of the avalanche light emission at the bottom of the uneven structure becomes small. Once again, I'm going to recall upon your time back in high school physics. Taking a look at the electromagnetic spectrum, we can see that visible light takes up a very small portion of that. And what Canon is doing here with the trenches is they're adjusting the width of them so that basically certain wavelengths of light can't come into it. And that's because red, blue, green, red, violet, purple, 
they all have different wavelengths. And by adjusting the wavelength so it's too big for the wave to actually go into that trench, well, we get some really amazing results. We, first of all, get a cleaner signal from the photoelectric conversion device on the sensor. That's good, right? Because what that means is less noise. And at the end of the day, what you really care about over anything else in this video is a cleaner, sharper image. And this patent application is all about that, but it's about Canon's next generation of cameras and sensors. This image shows Canon's trench patterns, and they can take several shapes. We have lattice structures, T-shaped trenches, random and non-periodic trenches, and even multi-depth trenches. And of course, this is one of my favorites, island structures. Each pattern changes how the light diffracts, either for better efficiency or for lower shadow current. And about that shadow current, Canon also wraps the trench in a pinning film and carefully dopes the silicone to reduce heat noise. That's your silent image killer if left unchecked. This patent application isn't just about trenches, it's about a complete redesign of the silicone itself, about their architecture. It's about designing that next level generation of sensors. And this, again, is something that's not going to happen right away. But it's got to be one of the most exciting, exciting patent applications that I've seen in a long time, at least when it comes to sensors and the photoelectric conversion device, or unit, I should say, because the unit is part of the sensor. I think I've kind of already answered the question of why should we care, but I, I think we can, we can focus that a little bit more to where we should care, like what, what type of photography would this benefit you in? Would it benefit videographers? Well, that's what I'm going to cover off now. If you're shooting low light or astro, this definitely helps clean up the shadow noise. Or what if you're into that new genre, video, VR, or 3D autofocus? Well, this definitely improves depth accuracy. This is a good thing. But again, I want to harp on, we're not going to see this in cameras coming out in 2025. It's not going to be in the R6 Mark III. It's not going to be in the R7 Mark II. It might, might not even be in the Canon EOS R5 Mark III or the R1 Mark II. But I would say that if it is to come out within the next three to five years, well, the R1 Mark II would definitely be my bet for the first camera to show this technology. But what I get a sense is going on here, as I'm seeing in various other patent applications, is we're getting to see a redesign of the sensor. And so what I'm looking forward to in patent applications, I'm looking for anything that talks about the photoelectric conversion unit, because that's a very big component here. How are the photosites changing? How is the conversion of the photons to electrons that are being registered for the various light levels of the dynamic range, right? So we got a photon well here and think of it kind of like this. It's a long, narrow tube. And when the photons hit, they're converted into electrons and they fill up in the well. When they hit the top, fill, fill the site up completely. Well, that's referred to as clipping. And you see that when you, whenever you shoot, if your, your sky's blown away, you can't pull it back. Well, that, that's a problem, right? So when you fill up the photo site, you're going to clip. But on the other side, when you get all the way down to the bottom, if you've only got a few um, electrons in the bottom of the well, it's really hard to be able to get that information and separate it from the background noise. And so your biggest problem at the bottom of the well is background noise. And that's where, when it comes to increasing dynamic range in cameras, it's not at the clipping level, at the highlight level that the focus is on. It's usually in the shadow level, which is why when I talk about Canon Log 2 and the R5 Mark II and the R6 Mark III, I say that's a really big deal because it means that they've been able to increase the dynamic range to usable levels in the shadows because it's the shadows where we need to recover information, not so much the highlights. And for astrophotographers, you're no longer going to be seeking out a special purpose camera. This new sensor, once completed, should give you everything you need. Or at least that's my dream. I mean, there are other things into play here. Some of you love the patent applications. I personally love them because I'm, it forces me to learn a lot more about the architecture, how the sensor actually works. So when we hear rumors, um, it's funny because it's, I have another filter in my mind that it passes through and I go, 
Okay, that doesn't make any sense because it violates this principle on the sensor design. Unless, of course, we move to a new sensor. So it helps me parse the information. It helps me learn a lot more about cameras at a very fundamental level. And I think that's a good thing. I just love to learn. But it's also another exciting angle on this channel. I'm not just covering news. I'm not just covering rumors. I'm not just doing the uh, tutorial. I'm covering patent applications. And that's exciting. And the nice thing about patent applications is when I record a video like now, that video might come out in a week, three weeks, a month, or even two. It allows me to spread out my content over a wider range. And that's a good thing. And what I'm noticing now is more and more of you are getting interested in these, these videos. But I think I'm also being able to convey the idea behind it much better. I'm able to convey much better design thumbnails to bring you in and then hook you with some pretty amazing research. Think of this as the PBS Nova or BBC Horizon for the camera world. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to, if you're part of that 1% of the 1% that wants to know everything that goes on behind the scenes, well then consider clicking that join button and becoming an insider level or an insider member. At that level, I take your requests and I publish videos on a weekly basis, taking you behind the scenes based on the questions you ask me. I also do periodic live streams, private live streams based on your availability. And well, they're a little bit different because it's just not me talking to you. I invite you into the stream and you get to see what it's like to actually be a host. And if you like it, you get hooked and you've got some camera knowledge. Well, then guess what? You've got an open invite as part of my expert live guest panel when I do full on live launches. And I promise you, those are exciting. They're an awful lot of fun. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Thank you for everybody. Uh, for those of you that are not interested in becoming the 1% of the 1%, that's perfectly fine. I just want to offer something to longtime viewers that have been supporting this channel for a very long time. And because I'm so busy generating content now, I'm spending more time on the research. I'm spending less time on the comments. So there's another level at $1.99 a month for the Shutterbug where you get priority comment reviews. I see your comments before anybody else's. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourself a great day, a great week, and we'll see you again soon. Okay.